All right, guys, now that we've got our, ES, our XT60 ready, right, we're going to set that aside for a second. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the ESC itself, right? Let me zoom in just a little bit on that, maybe. Okay, so on the ESC, what we're going to do is we're going to get our flux pen because we want to prep the ESC first. So let's get our flux pen, and let's just go ahead and get all the pads done. All right. And just, you know, just brush it across. No big deal. We'll do both sides, okay, top and bottom. There we go. Okay, so now our pads are ready to be prepped, right? And what we're gonna do actually is, when we mount this, we're gonna mount this upside down. So this is actually gonna be touching the frame. So we're gonna be doing most of our soldering on this side. So let's go ahead now and we're gonna tin the board up. So I'm gonna get my solder here, use some of the one that I had from the XT60. And I'm gonna set this cable aside for a second. And let's just go ahead and we're gonna tin the board up, okay? So here it goes. It doesn't take much to tin it up. Just get your, get your, uh, get your solder on those pads, just like that. It's a very quick process. And as you see, I have my finger on the board because I do not. As long as my fingers can hold this board, it means the board's not hot. It means I'm not holding the solder on it too long. So we're just going to tin up all these pads right here. All right. I need more solder now, so let me get more solder. There we go. Okay, so this is what it should look like as far as the motor pads. They're soldered now, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the positive of the ground. I'll start with the ground first. So let's just lay it on there kind of nicely here, and then just, just kind of spread it here. That flux really helps it to, oops, leave my sticker down there. The flux really helps it to kind of spread and stay within that, in that pad. And then we'll do the positive here. All right, there you go. So this, this ESC is now fully tinned and ready to go, okay? So uh, what we'll do next is we're going to go ahead and I want to check something out here. So let me look in this uh, setup here real quickly. Okay, so they do in the board, in the flight controller that you get, you do get a capacitor here. So you can use that capacitor. Uh, I'm going to grab that right now. You also get an additional XT60, but we're not going to be using that one. But take your capacitor out because you will need this. So let me put that right there. You are going to need this for this next step. So go ahead and take that out of your uh, flight controller package there. And what we're going to notice, and you may or may not know already, is you see that this uh, gray stripe going down, it's only on one side of the capacitor. That indicates your ground. I know that we have wires here that are black and red, but the fact is, is they can come backwards sometimes, and they have in the past. So we always go by this right here. So this will be your ground side, okay? If you reverse it and plug it in and then power this up, this thing will pop and explode. So just be careful about that, all right? So remember, the side with the markings here and that little negative symbol, that's your ground, which means that this capacitor is going to sit something like this, all right? Before we add the capacitor, we wanna go ahead and get our uh, XT60 on, okay? So lay out your XT60 properly. As you'll notice on the XT60 pad, there's the positive here and the ground here, and then we have our black and red wires. You're gonna lay it just like that, all right? What we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and tin this up as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some flux on the end, even though it's already tinned, I'm gonna put some flux on the end of this anyway, and I'm gonna go ahead and put my own solder on here because I want this to melt easily. So we're gonna take it just like this, and we're just gonna put another layer of solder over their tin. And you'll see, don't press with your soldering iron. It will melt it on its own and it'll, it'll, it'll get it in there very nicely. Just get just like that, just like that. Just let the soldering iron rest on it. Okay, there you go. All right, now get the excess solder out. Okay, so again, we'll take some tweezers and, oh, here, perfect. Okay, so we'll take my tweezers here. And if you, if this is sliding away, now there's a couple things, like we have these in stock. Uh, I'll show you one of these things that I use. Um, I was using it yesterday, so now there's no telling where I put it, but uh, let me see. It's just a little board holder, and I've got a couple different versions of it, but let me see if I can find the one that I want to show you, which is not in front of me for some reason. So here's one option right here. This is another board holder, bless you, that we use, okay, uh, which is okay too. This is a good one, and you basically just put your stuff in there, but this is where we're going to be soldering, so I was trying to find you a different one. And I know it's here, so bear with me a second. Well, I thought it was here. It's probably right in front of me, but darn it, I don't know where I have placed it. All right, well, anyways, the idea is that you don't want the board sliding away from you while you're trying to solve it. And I really, really, really want to find this. 
and I really can't. So let's just get to it with what we've got. Just keep in mind that if your board is not staying still, you could put something on it if you don't have a board holder, and I'll show you. I'm gonna do it the way like I used to before I had the board holder. Is oh, it's right here. This is one that I have. This is a really good one too, because when you it's got room to you've got multiple ways to mount this. You can hold your XT60s here. Um, you can basically put your board in uh, like this and tighten it down, right? And it'll hold it in place. You can do it like this, it'll hold it in place. Or if you have a smaller board, you can put it in an angle here. Um, but I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna omit these now because a lot of you guys may not have that. So what you can do is just put something kind of heavy on it, just like that. Just hold it in place, okay? That's the main idea. Then take your tweezers, lift this up, and get ready. You're gonna hold it here, and you're just gonna wait for it to kind of gently melt and spread onto the the uh, the connection here, okay? Just like that. And then you can you can kind of just move your soldering iron to get the solder to kind of spread and hold. And that's what you end up with. This is a nice solid, but if you look over, it's open. So we're gonna come back and address this in a minute, but you've got a nice connection here. It's a very solid connection now. So we're gonna put that there, and we're now we're gonna do the positive, okay? And again, just hold it on there. And this, you can kind of just drag your soldering iron over to one side, and then kind of to the other. And, and do not be afraid to add more solder, guys. This is what I'm gonna do. So once I have it in place, I always bring in more solder just to fill in any gaps that I have. And so I'll just kind of apply it there just like that. And slowly we will start filling in the gaps on the, on the pad here, okay? And you'll see that happening here just shortly. There you go. All right, let me just make sure I get this in there. Perfect. Now I'll let that cool a second, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and now you've got your pads exposed right here. That's why we tin both sides. Let me put this on here to hold it. I'm gonna do the positive first. And I'm just going to make sure that my solder connects to whatever is exposed on the bottom, kind of gives it a grip on the bottom as well. Okay, so there we go. And then we'll do the same with our ground. And then we're just going to get a little bit of coverage here. Try to spread it out, spread it out a little evenly if possible. And that's it. We really don't need much more than that. I don't need to really worry about covering the whole pad. But what I do want to do now is when I flip this back over, and my board's good, it's not hot. What I do want to do is, and if yours is hot, let it cool down. I just want to now come back over here and kind of just even it out. Make sure that I don't have any ridges that aren't, aren't, aren't covered here, just like that. And this is now fully soldered on both sides perfectly. Again, I'm not worried about um, a little bit of pad exposed on the bottom. I really just wanted to connect the exposed bottom area of the ground or the wire, whatever it's supposed to this bottom pad as well, and they are, and this is extremely solid, okay? So now with this done, all I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna grab my um, capacitor here, all right? And I'm gonna measure it, and this is gonna be a good length. So what I want you to do is I just want you to cut the excess red uh, wire off, so make it the same length as the black. So when I cut that, these are now the same length. There's no need to trim the wire down more than that. And out of habit for me, I'm gonna go ahead and just tin these. I'm gonna put the flux on here, and I mean, I'm gonna tin them very, it may hold, it may not hold very much uh, solder, but I like to just kind of prep them a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to move this out of the way, and I'm just going to apply, it likes to roll, so if you have helping hands, you can use them. Uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of solder right there and a little bit of solder on my red, just like that, okay? That's it. Now that I've got my solder on here, when I go and put this on, it's gonna go, it's gonna, uh, it's gonna attach very quickly. So I'm gonna put these on. Remember, you have the stripe on this side going towards the ground. So lay it like this, lay it on there, and then just hold it, and you will see slowly, this will bind, just like that, okay? Make sure you get it fully in there. And that is perfect. Okay, now I'm gonna do the same for the red, clean that off. I'm gonna bring out a little bit of solder for me. I like to just make it a little bit smooth, but I'm gonna add a little bit here. And then I'm going to hold it down there. And I'm going to just hold it and let the solder that's on there already join the two. And there you have it. You have a great connection here. They're both on there very strong. I'm just gonna make sure that the connection is good. I don't like to see the wire uh, protruding too much, so I'm gonna add a little bit more solder there just to get it to kind of melt in. Perfect, and then just take it off. There you go, just like that. Okay, 
Now, if you look at this, you've got all your uh, capacitor, you've got your capacitor wires on there well, everything looks good, you're solid. I mean, that's great. All the way through, this sucker is solid, okay? So that's adding the capacitor and, uh, and the XT60. <coughs> Now I'm going to come back in the next video and we're going to take this ESC, get the wires prepped for it and mount it on the board. So I'll see you guys in just a